All right, so let's talk about a double heterojunction HBT. And um, this is in the context of three other designs that we already pursued. The abrupt junction, it has a, a spike in the conduction band that was um, reducing the gain. Um, then we had a smooth uh, material where we had graded the emitter and therefore eliminated this kink here in the potential for the electrons and we made the uh, uh, barriers for the holes larger. And the third design is we built in an accelerating field in the base. Now, there are some reasons why you might want to do some more. Um, and that has to do uh, with uh, a more balanced device. So. Let's look at something we haven't looked at at all uh, at these transistors. We've always considered uh, a reverse bias um, base collector junction. All we ever cared about was injecting electrons this way. Okay? And we did all the calculations uh, assuming that you have a large forward bias, which is then reflective here on the large VCE and we calculated cur uh, current voltage characteristics on the collector like that, and as you ramp up the base uh, current, you uh, ramp up um, the uh, collector current. Okay? We haven't really looked at, um, so we looked at really operating at, at high currents, or at least at high voltages here. Okay? We haven't really looked at uh, what happens down there. So the question is, does the IC really go to zero when VCE is zero? Okay. And that addresses really a, the, uh, a circuit question like this, where if you had a, um, a bias condition like this, where the two voltages would be zero, you have a short circuit, and you're forcing a base current in this current model, of course, yeah, there needs to be a balance between the collector and the emitter current because in total the three currents need to sum up to zero. Okay, so what happens? So let's calculate this offset voltage that is needed to balance the currents. Okay, so we have a current expression as before for the electrons that has the base to emitter voltage built in and uh, this is current J1 going forward, the one we always considered. Okay, now if we have a smaller uh, bias between the base uh, and the collector, so let's call it, no, this is no longer in, in reverse bias, but it's actually in forward bias, just like this guy. Okay, then we have virtually the same expression, the only difference is what we have in the exponent, and one we have Vc, the other one we have Ve, okay? But it's still electron flow, but going in the opposite direction, okay? So now going from, from the collector, going here to the uh, base, and then ultimately into the emitter. Okay, um, what we also have is now a current, um, while well, we always considered this current going here into the emitter, under this bias condition, we also now have a whole current that goes into the collector like this, and we can write it down. Just the same expression as what we had before, we just hadn't done it before, um, and considered this, this cur whole current to be negligible. Now, we can sum these currents to be up. You have to be careful about the sign uh, that you associate here, and the total current uh, JC, as shown in black, in, in the uh, choice is here J1 minus J2 minus J3, if you consider the sign of the charges, etc. Okay. Now, if you had identical voltages on this, the J1 and J2 would be, of course, balanced. But uh, J3 causes an additional component. Okay? And J2, 3 and J2 need to balance J1 to get the emitter, uh, at, at a chosen emitter voltage of zero, uh, you need to uh, balance these currents in order to get 
a particular voltage on the collector. Okay? So let's figure out what that voltage would be. It's not that hard to calculate. So uh, it's useful to introduce this coefficient here, the reverse emitter in, uh, injection efficiency. It's really similar to the beta we always had calculated, which beta was IC over IB, right? In the forward bias direction. Now we're looking at the efficiency of injecting electrons from the collector um, into the base flowing the other way versus the control current that is going this way, J3. Okay? And the expression is, is identical to what we had with beta, if you will, if you compare all these coefficients. Okay? And from there, you can solve the, the balance equation for the current, and you'll find that the, um, the offset voltage uh, follows this expression here with a log of 1 plus 1 plus uh, gamma r. Okay? Now, what would you like? Ideally, J3 should be as small as possible, right? And if ideally J3 is as small as possible, that would ramp up gamma R to be very large, right? So it's similar to optimizing beta, where we wanted to make sure the base current remains as small as possible, okay? And that would then, if, if gamma is very large, you would have that here, then you base up the, your offset voltage becomes small. Okay? I mean, ideal is gamma is infinity, you have the log of 1, which is 0, which is a perfectly balanced uh, device. All right. So how would you make gamma uh, large? How did we make beta large? Well, we made beta large by making the band gap here larger than the base. So if we want to do the flip side for the collector, then we need to make the band gap on the collector bigger compared to the base. Okay. So we'll increase the band gap in the, in the collector, and it's the same idea as what we did with beta. All right. So why would you want to do some of these things? Well, number one is you make the device symmetric and you, you um, reduce the offset voltage. Okay? That can be important for some circuit parts. Also, a, a larger band gap in the collector has additional advantages. In high power uh, 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 devices, you want to have high voltages applied. You want to really pump power through the device. Now, if that's the case, a large band gap in the collector is important in order to reduce impact ionization and other breakdown mechanisms. Um, so uh, it reduces the avalanching if you have a, big, a bigger uh, um, collector. Also, um, you can increase then this current uh, and keep control of the, uh, um, the junction by um, not having the Kirk effect, um, effectively the junction um, collector junction punching through, okay, and losing the junction. So therefore you can ramp up the current much higher if you have a, a, a larger collector gap. Also, there might be aspects of having symmetric circuits, so where you have a device that can be operated symmetrically in both bias directions, so that can cut down on wiring, etc. All right, so there's advantages to having this double heterojunction HPT, and now we have four um, design concepts on, under our belt. And now let's look at some uh, more modern designs uh, that will blow your socks off compared to the, the sketches I just made here. So we'll do that in the next section.